Hello friends, Tanya here with a video for the Festival of Fall blog hop. This one is featuring Harvest Goodness. That's the theme this time. And we're using the Friendship Farms stamp sets and stamp set and dies by Concord and Ninth. I bought these last fall and I had a blast playing with them and I'm going to play with them again today. I'm going to stamp these with Distress Oxide inks. They are good for stamping too. These uh, stamps build different harvest images. This one happens to be a bushel of apples. I'm using two browns here to stamp the basket. I think I used frayed burlap and, um, oh gosh, I don't remember, walnut stain maybe. I'm using festive, no, candied apples. That makes sense, we're stamping apples. And mowed lawn for the apples and the greenery. And that is the apple basket. <clears throat> I am going to stamp an entire background of different harvest images and I'll show you one of each. I thought about doing the rock and roll technique with the pumpkin but decided against it at least to try it without it. So I'm using carved pumpkin uh, distress oxide ink to stamp the body of the pumpkin and I'm just doing I am trying to do the rule of threes or a triangular pattern with these I'm going to use the Mowed Lawn Distress Oxide ink to stamp the stem and a little bit of curly vine there on each of the pumpkins. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, pay attention to what you're doing. I stamped it with orange by accident or inked it up with orange. I love how crisp and clear that stamps with one try. Not using my Misty at all here. And the carrots, we're going to use Spiced Marmalade for the carrot part. And there's going to be a few more of the carrots than there are because you're going to start with your largest image and work to your smallest images to fill in the background. And then I'm going to use Lucky Clover for carrot tops. And I try to keep these images rotated to create variety in the background. I, as you may have noticed, love to make my own backgrounds. There's just something about creating your own pattern paper that's so very satisfying. Um, now, I decided I needed a smaller image to help fill in the background. So I took the leaf from the stamp set and we are gonna do a little bit of rock and roll with this one. I'm going to use uh, ripe persimmon and I believe that is the spiced marmalade. And I am going to fill in with a bunch of little orange and reddish leaves throughout this panel. Now this is a five and a half by eight and a half inch panel of cardstock. I made it bigger than I needed so that I could um, pick the part of the panel that I like best. And I do use the whole thing you'll see towards the end. Well, almost, there's just a little bit left. So that's the whole background. I love how that turned out. Now I'm going to use some, I have panels of this ink smushed background because I love the way this turns out. This happens to be from my carved pumpkin uh, distressed oxide ink pad that my grandson re-inked with spiced marmalade and I just went with it. Or is it spiced marmalade inked with carved pumpkin? Either way. It's both of those oranges on the same ink pad, and I smushed those. So I'm going to take the pumpkin dies from the Friendship Farm die coordinating set, and I'm going to layer those up quickly and create a cute pumpkin to be a central image on this. I love this die release tool. I call it my pokey tool. I got this from Concordant, yes, Concordant Ninth also. <clears throat> And it just helps get the dies out and to poke out any of the chads from your dies. I'm using some Barely Art Precision glue here. And I'm not going to put anything behind these. It's just layers of paper <clears throat> uh, to create this adorable pumpkin. Now you could put the stem on before you put the other layers of the pumpkin body on. But I was able to slip that in quickly right there. And I love how that turned out. Now I needed a little more background panel. Well, I needed a little more pattern for an additional element on this card. So I'm taking the woven plaid background stamp also from Concord and Ninth and I'm putting it in my Misty. And I'm gonna use this 
craft colored cardstock. I'm not even sure which brand it is. It just happens to be from my scrap bin. And I'm going to use uh, Sahara Sand, which happens to be a Stampin' Up! ink pad. Left. Uh, I haven't gotten rid of those. They work just fine. Um, Concord and Ninth has a whole line of beautiful colors. <clears throat> and you could use those also. You can use any ink. I'm going to add the sentiments. These are also from the Friendship, Far Friendship Farms. And I die cut them with this banner from the Friendship Farms die set. It's a very good stamp set and die set. It's got all kinds of things that work very well together. <clears throat> so I'm going to stamp those in Versamark ink. And I do stamp them twice because I want a nice, thick, full embossed image when we're done here. I'm going to take the Hero Arts brass. No, it, this is the copper embossing powder. And we're going to heat emboss that. I love how well that came together. I did heat set that paper before I did the Versamark on it because um, that ink, since it's a firm foam pad, it tends to leave a whole lot of ink there and it takes a little longer to dry. And I didn't want my embossing powder to stick all over the panel. So it's all heated and melted there. looks wonderful. Now I'm going to add some... Um, elements to the inside of the card. These were the scraps from the pieces that I cut out because I die cut the main panel for that card with the A7, the Honey Bee Stamps, A7 double stitched rectangles. And I use the largest rectangle because this is, of course, a five by seven card because I'm trying to build my stash again for birthday cards for work. You could certainly make this in an A2 size. I'm going to use some coaster blank here to add a little dimension to my card. I'm just going to glue those onto the back of the front panel with some Barely Art Precision Glue also. I do put this under my Misty for just a few seconds to help keep that nice and flat. And this glue does not leave the glue marks on the other side of the paper um, or the warping which I love. So we're going to add a little bit of coaster blank to the back of this panel and to the back of the pumpkin. I love that you can just quickly trim this stuff down and glue it down to anything with pretty much any adhesive. It does not care. <laughs> Since it is basically paper pulp, <clears throat> it works just like your paper. So yay for ingenuity, right? <laughs> so we're just going to take these strips and glue those on the sides and then we'll be ready to glue that to the card front. This September here in northern Minnesota turned September 1st and suddenly the weather went from 70s to 80s to uh, lows in the 30s and highs in the 50s and 60s yeah September did not have to turn this cold this fast thank you very much I would like my warm weather a little longer however it has certainly put me in the mood to make autumn cards sweater weather plaids pumpkins pumpkin spice love that all I love how this card turned out. I think it's a great gender neutral card and I hope you give it a try. If you don't have these stamps or these dies, I have provided a list with all of the supplies I used in the description box below and they are clickable links. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please click that subscribe button and don't miss any of the rest of the participants in this blog hop. The full list of participants is in the description box, or you can click on the link to my blog post at, in the description box also and find the list there. <clears throat> Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.